Let's see if we can do the world's shortest presser. Right. Let's, do, no, let's, do the, let's see if we can do it. We might as well. Let's make it a spe- let's make it a let's make it a special one. Short and sweet. What do you got? How impressive was that for you, given how it was looking at say half time and the fact that you were three effectively three of your top best twenty two now? Yeah. Well, in the end, I thought. I mean, St Kilda's brand is high energy. Um, they're quick. They're fit. And they, you know, the pressure that they put on us um, was obvious to all, and we were, we we just didn't we weren't able to handle it, you know, through that first half. And um, but I thought they have the maturity to be able to control the game through our ball use after half time was um, was as good as we've seen it. It was it was a really mature response to the situation. Um, it was led well. And it was pretty sustained over that over that hour of footy, mm. culminating in in a, in a pretty dominant last quarter. Um, Sorry. I think we, I think it was turning in the third quarter. Um, you know, it was the it was the only it was the only quarter the last quarter was the only quarter we had it in our front half more than more than our back half, and we were. We were on our heels for a fair while. It was a bit of a. You know, we were on the ropes, you know, for large periods of, of the first half, and then even in that third quarter, we we held up against multiple um, D50 stoppages, you know, ball ups and, and um, boundary throw-ins in our back 50 that we just needed to grind in and dig in and get the job done. So we were on our back foot for a lot of it, but. Yeah, the, the the composure and the wherewithal to be able to absorb that and then come back with a little bit of um, with a little bit more on a return serve was was impressive. Did you have a word to Brady Grundy at half time, or was it not needed? No, he's he was certainly responded in the second. Yeah, look, well, in the end, the the way we used the ball helped Brody after half time. It helped all our players. Um, it helped the guys fall to the ball, but you know St Kilda's pressure was was pretty good. It was, you know, statistically it was through the roof. It was, um, you know, they were up over over 200, which is a which is an arbitrary number for general public, but it's but it was a high it was a high pressure performance by them, and we weren't able to buffer their pressure. But as the game wore on, we were able to um, control the ball a little bit better. And therefore control their pressure, and therefore control the game. Yeah. I know Brady kicked four goals, but just you now got Ben Reid back. How much yep. did he show his value, especially with what he was doing earlier when the heat was really? Oh, good. The, the 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 big boys up forward were, were good. Brody and, and Ben. Um, I thought Rupert Rupert stayed in the side to give us a little bit of of that aerial um, presence in front of the ball as well. And, and, and look better inside as well than last week. So that was a that was a good growth for him from last week. Um, and and Brody himself, Grundy, was whether it was behind the ball or in front of it was starting to, you know, really impact in the air. So that was yeah, the big boys are, did their jobs well. Yeah. So that does Reid offer more than Cox when Reid's healthy and not just like is that a googly or is it a wrong one or what are, what are you trying to throw at me? No, I'm just, just trying to say that well, they obviously seem to be fighting for the same position. Agreed. Yeah. Um, well, can they play together? They could. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah I've seen. We, if you've got blokes, you know, Cox is injured but has performed, um, we'll come back in the side at some point. Um, Reedy's played two games out of three, good games out of three, and Checkers just keeps producing. So. It's a good problem to have, and when we come up to look at the opposition that we face and and what their um, strengths are and what we need to buffer, we'll just we'll just keep. And we also need to understand um, and monitor the, the well-being of our players physically more than anything. But but you know whether where they're at in terms of you know preparedness and readiness to play, 
um, if we get the opportunity, if you get blokes that are competing for spots, you might give you might might give you a little bit more opportunity to rotate guys through and, and make sure that you you maintain that hunger for positions and competitiveness for positions, but you also you've got fresher players when you when you get there. So it's a good problem to have if we if we have that capacity. Yeah, well they should, but um, we don't have a definitive on that. Langus, we didn't play at the game, which is which clearly um, would put him under some sort sort of cloud, some form of cloud. But um, um, yeah, we'll let that settle and, and see where we're a six day break into into our next contest. So, so we'll, yeah, we'll we'll have a look at that when we go through the list and how how other blokes are pulled up and consider that going into next week. Given that Phillips got straight away, got on with the game and didn't seem to be probably worried all about Travis's I, I actually didn't. I, I sort of moved on and was watching the next part of the game, so I actually haven't seen a replay of it. So um, instinctively, I thought he was going low to, to take the ground ball in, in play, but I, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't seen a replay, so it's hard to comment. Yeah, it's pretty good. Good set. Yeah, I mean, he's a skillful player, Steve, eh? and um, he wasn't going to make it with a drop punt. Um, it'll keep Blighty happy for a week, so um, he would have been impressed with that. Cheers. <laughs>